Um, all right, so hi guys, welcome to our uh, view board training for today. Um, if you haven't had a chance to sign in yet, um, if on your device, be it laptop or phone, you go to bit.ly slash tt sign in. Um, that just gives me an idea of who all is here and who all I can send um, any uh, updated materials to. Um, I know we're also recording uh, the session today in case you can't stay for the whole time or in case uh, we have people who want to watch it a little bit later. Um, that just kind of gives me an idea of kind of what's going on and where you're at. Um, so we're going to talk about the view board today. We're going to briefly go over our basics of it. Have people had a chance to get to like play around with the view board in their room? I'm seeing nodding, I'm seeing sort of, okie dokie. Um, cool, so today's going to be a little bit of kind of basic review of um, some of just those board basics. But really what we're going to be focusing on today is how you can actually use it in your class. We're going to talk about how you can go about casting it. Um, how you can cast using Zoom with it as well, which actually is, might seem crazy complicated. It's actually fairly straightforward, which is nice. Um, and then take a look at some of the resources available to you. Um, I will say, I always like to start off our viewboard trainings by letting you know um, that as someone who works uh, as the tech coach for Princeton and for an Edge, um, I am not a ViewSonic or ViewBoard rep. So while I, like, if you ask me, like, the super in-depth, nitty-gritty details of how something really specific works, if I don't know the answer, I'll make sure that I go get it for you. But the cool thing is that because I have that classroom experience, even when I've been playing around with it, I'm able to go, oh, okay, I would love to have been able to use this to solve a problem I had in class, or this would have been so great for this activity. So if you have uh, any questions on the view board that we can't answer today, I will be jotting them down, and I will be getting back to everyone with the answer on that. Cool, cool. All right, so does anyone still need this up or are we good? Cool, okay. So we're going to start off just with um, our board itself. It seems so crazy. There we go. We're going to start off with our board itself on just some of the basic things that you can change about it um, and a couple of reminders of things that you can do. So one of the things that is pretty nice to get to do, especially uh, for the board that's in your room, um, all the view boards come with this nice little message up at the top, including the title and then kind of the subtitle underneath. If you hold down and then let go, you can actually change the message that's there. A lot of times what we recommend is you can change it to the name of the room that you're in, um, which is especially nice if you have other teachers who are coming into the room too, or anyone that you share the room with. So you can change it to be the name of the room that you're in, you can change it to your name in particular. Um, you also can change that little subtitle there, so maybe you change it to the title of your class. You can change it to have maybe a inspirational message that students get to see and everything. Um, but you can make your changes there. All you have to do is just click. And then you have your, uh, you have your keyboard that pops up. By clicking and dragging it, it can also be moved around. So if your keyboard starts up here and you're short like me, you can drag it down. Um, if, it's, if it pops up and maybe it's hiding what you're trying to type, you can always move it so you can better uh, type out what you need. So I promise I will change this back afterwards. But if I wanted to say this is the view board specifically in the library, I just type it out, go to the next, I can change my subtitle, and if I'm finished, I hit that green check mark. The one I would avoid is set password. You really don't need that, and that kind of, what we actually have found in training is that can lead to some problems if you try to set a password and then essentially you forget it or anything, it's really hard to get back in. What's up? How do you turn the keyboard and keyboard button click sound off? Um, so that's that drives actually, me nuts. <laughs> yeah, so that's actually going to be within your settings. The reason mine right. didn't go is I turned down my volume. Uh, um, yeah, sorry, I forgot. I did that at the start before we started uh, okay. the recording. Um, yeah, that tick, because tick, I get annoyed with the click, 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 click. Oh, it was so loud. Yeah, so you can also adjust the volume here. Um, and if you missed it, the way that we got to our settings was you just hold and press on uh, the actual background itself, and you can get to your settings from here. If you want to get to your overall settings as well, you can do that from your app door by hitting that down arrow. And then if we scroll down, we can access our settings. 
so we can get through some of our things, some of our other settings as well, like the network we're on, we can get into what we have in the display as our background, all sorts of good stuff. Um, but yeah, so for the reason I wasn't doing the boop 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 was because I turned the volume for it. The thing, do, 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 Yeah, so we'll probably walk you through a couple of slides on the keyboard as well, but um, yeah, for me, I just I turn it down, and that helps out. Okay. So as you're taking a look at your board as well, again, you can make your changes to your message. We also have that you can set your connection. Um, part of the reason why it's going to be important to check for your connection is that if you want to do any wireless casting, so any casting from your device, or if you have students that you want to wirelessly cast, they all need to be on the same network. Um, so if you, I believe in this case we're on the PCSD Vikings yeah. network. So we're on the Vikings network for our board here. Um, so you need to make sure that you are connected to that one if you want your computer to connect and cast there as well. A couple other quick features. Um, like I said, this is our lovely app drawer. Part of what's nice about it is that you can pin apps to that initial world. So if I wanted the uh, vcast receiver, if I wanted the vcast receiver to go away, if I wanted to move something, I could. And then if I went, oh no, that was actually important. I access that all the time because that's how we're going to be able to get casting on here. Yeah. I just scroll back down to it. I hold. And I can add it back up to the top. So you can customize that so it's really the apps that work best for you um, and the apps that are going to make the most difference and the ones maybe that you access more often than not. I apologize for all the adjusting of masks. Glasses, man. Oh, not the crazy. All right, so that just about takes us through just what's on our board itself. Um, the other big thing that we usually do with our board is that we have these two arrows that you'll see on the side. Um, and our two arrows, they do the same thing, it just depends on where you are. If it's easier for you to access from here, you can. Maybe you're walking up to the front of your room and you want to quickly tap it. This is actually going to open up your toolbar. So with your toolbar, you have a couple different things that you can do um, to best access your features. The first one is that arrow backwards. It's just going to take you back a step. The home button will always take you home. So even if you are in the middle of your whiteboarding app or you have another website open, if you click that home button, it will take you back to this page. So you'll be able to get back pretty easily. The next one that we have, um, if you see this, you might see this on your smartphone. Uh, usually it'll be down in the bottom corner. But our one that looks like kind of two squares that are stacked up on each other, this opens all the apps that we've had open. I have two things about this. One, it's nice for if you want to quickly navigate between apps you already have. Two, if your board is ever really slow, um, think of it again like when your smartphone runs really slow, when you close out of those applications, that's going to help free up some space and free up some uh, memory so that it runs a little faster for you. So if you ever see that it is running really slow, you can just go through with your X, and close it out. Um, and that can help out with performance quite a bit. The other features that we have, uh, we have our My, where it has the My, like that red cloud around it, that's your My View board within the board itself. You can use it to build your uh, presentations or to do any whiteboarding. So it'll take a moment, and then once it loads, You'll see it looks pretty much like a whiteboard. All right. So you can use it just like a whiteboarding app that you normally use. Um, it's pretty responsive there. I'm actually going to show you another like another tool that you can use that does really similar things, um, but has a bit more to it and how we access that from our computer and get it on here. But this is saved and this is stored within the board itself. Um, so you have your typical features with using your markers, you have your eraser, shapes, text that you can use, and if you feel like I'm kind of flying through it, it's because I'm going to show you when we get to the MyView Board app itself from your computer, because again, there's just more that can be done there. So again, that can be accessed with just our little red cloud with the word My in it. You have the one that says the same cloud with the word My and has a video with it. That's actually going to be your clips, so you can access videos that uh, MyView Board has curated. 
Um, honestly, they have some pretty interesting videos, but you also have ways you can easily integrate, again, from the app on your computer that includes things like clips from YouTube. So it's just a bigger library that you can access and you can reach. Then the next one that we have um, is actually looks like a marker. And when we pull this up, we can start making the annotations again. So what makes this so different from the whiteboarding itself? Well, a couple things. One, even if I'm like on my home page or on a different page than just the whiteboarding itself, I can pull it up and I can do that again. I can even change my color, but I'm like, ooh, that didn't show up that well. So I can change my color up there. Here's the thing. Um, I've heard a couple teachers talking about, you know, I've tried using it, but then it doesn't show up to my kids on Zoom or things like that. If you use that, what we call the glass pane feature, it rarely is like putting up a piece of glass over your board and then marking on it. It's not changing the board itself. It's not changing anything about what's actually on the screen. It's like putting, again, that piece of glass or that piece of plastic up and writing on that. So what's nice is you can do things like you can save it. You can save it locally to, um, to the board itself. You can also save it to the cloud. So if we save it to the cloud, it'll have us give it a name. We'll go Sure, that works. And then you'll see this little plus pops up and there's nothing there yet. This is where you can sign in to your Google Drive account and you can have it saved directly to Drive. Highly recommend this, especially if you're working on things from home and from school. Um, makes things a lot easier for being able to organize and navigate. So we hit that plus, choose Google Drive. And then we type in our email. And again, you can move it out of the way so that you have better access to it. And you can hear that that clip came back because we turned up the volume a little bit on our, on our uh, board. Okay. So upload, upload a success. And then when I go look into my Google Drive, it'll actually be uploaded there that I can access. So if you ever have any time where you're making any of your glass paint effect and something really cool happens, a student does something really interesting, makes a good connection, anything like that, um, you'll be able to access that and use that. Again, I recommend going more of a route of using the um, computer itself and casting it from there. It's just a lot easier, but this is an option that you can do. All right. So, we talked about some of our basics um, with our different tools, some of our basics on um, being able to access that my newborn app. You'll hear me talk a little bit as we get into casting and using it on our computers about how we have kind of a difference between um, the my new board application that's on the board itself and the one on your computer. I wanted to get to show you that really so that you know which one I'm talking about. When you click on that whiteboard app on the board, it's just the board one. It's not the one that's going to be on your computer and give you more access to what you can do. So I highly recommend using the one that gives you more access to more things you can do. Again, part of the nice bit of not being a ref myself. All right, so we're actually going to take a little bit into casting it. So I have my laptop here. What if I want to cast something to the board? And in particular, we're going to start off with looking at wireless casting. Um, part of the benefit of that is that as you're wirelessly casting, you could be moving around the room with your device, maybe going over to check on student work while you're also still having that presentation up on screen that you can um, and it's just helpful for kind of freeing you up from just being at your, your front of the room or the podium or anything like that. So how do you go about doing that? First thing that you're going to need is that on your laptop, you're actually going to need what's called the cast sender. Um, Jason is going to be helping us out there with getting that downloaded onto people's computers. So if you don't have that yet, it is on its way. Um, and then on the board itself, you're going to need this app, the cast receiver. So when we click on it, you're going to see the view board cast come up. And you'll see that there's a pin listed here as well. So with the pin that's listed here, this is going to be our pin for being able to access the device itself. You'll notice that the device also comes with its own name. In this case, it's the CAST8623. Um, we really recommend and we really urge teachers to rename that. And 
rename it to your room number, typically to your room number, or something that's a little easier to identify. Um, just because when you have, you know, even if it's just 20 boards that you're trying to choose from or that are all on the same network, you want to make sure you're able to quickly see which one is yours. So how do we make sure we can see which one is ours? If you click our settings icon, you'll see that it pops up with device name and then the pencil that's in the little box. So we click on that pencil. Again, I promise to change it back. So if I want to just call this library, Then it's already changed to library. You can see the device name is down there as library. And when I go to connect and I look at my list of devices, I'll see it as library. Again, strongly recommend changing that even to, honestly, the room number that you're in will make it easy not only for you, but for anyone else who ever tries to connect. <coughs> now, what if you want to change up that pin? Um, the pin is something that refreshes any time you reopen VCAS, uh, VCAS receiver. It also can refresh here with this connect code. If I just click that button, it refreshes and I have a new pin. So if you ever have a time where you need to refresh it because maybe you closed out and you're trying to connect back in and you go to enter in that old pin, don't panic. It, I mean, it's not going to work, but if you see that it's not working, it's just because there's a new pin now, so just go back to that app and you'll be able to see it. Ooh. All right, so let's say that we're going to go connect. So if we're casting wirelessly in this case, and if you're wondering, like, but I can't see it because it's on the laptop right now, no worries. We're going to have it in just a second. Probably will show you a little easier of what we're doing for it. So on your laptop, you'll have, um, when you open VCAST Sender, it'll ask you for a pin. So we have our pin that's listed up on our board. So this is KDU, P and E. And we don't have these yet, right? You said we're going to be getting them? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so that will be coming in. So and will that be on the student's computer also? That I'm not sure. Okay, that's a good question. So, yeah, that might be that. I would say that it can depend. Part of the benefit of having them on student computers is that they then could also cast up to screens um, and could join in on that. Um, if part of the downside, I guess, would be that then they can cast it up on the screen when you have your pin up and you're entering into your info and everything. Um, but just even refreshing that pin, or I'll show you kind of too how you can, uh, a little bit later, how you can set it up so that you can approve anyone who's trying to get to the screen um, if you want me to show you that later. Yeah. All right, so um, I entered in our pin, and the very next thing that happens is I'm asked if I want to cast or receive, and she was cast, because I don't want to have anything on here, and voila! So this actually is our, is the laptop screen itself. Um, so you'll see here, it pops up like a little like red and white box. Um, and we have it that says cast, originally had that pin number that I wanted to join in with. Again, I can kind of try to show when we're connecting a little bit here. Um, but now, I signed in with my laptop. You can even see down on the bottom, we have our taskbar for the laptop. So Jason, I hope you don't have anything open, you don't want to pop it up on screen. <laughs> Um, so, as for here, we're actually in one of the MyViewboard apps. Um, one of the things that's pretty nice with connecting to the computer, and this is something that like I lost it over and I was geeking out about because I just thought of so many different ways that I could have used it in my English or computer science classes, is that when we're connecting with our computer, if I go to my websites or if I go to my desktop itself, I still have access to all of my original tools. So I can still have access to any of my tools that I had before, including our glass pane. So if I'm telling students, okay, you need to make sure you go to sign in and, you, and make sure that you click on there, I can have it pop up on here, even though it's on our website. Okay, now this is still just our glass pane effect. What we're working with in the My Viewboard app, which is also going to get downloaded uh, via JSON, so he's going to get that sent out to you soon. When we're using the My Viewboard app, we can make edits and changes to the site that our students can see and that can actually get saved. So we'll kind of take a look back in uh, just a moment. Can you freeze the screen and that stays up there? Can what? So like if you freeze the screen, that writing goes away. Is there a way to keep it up there? Like if 
So, so right now, is there anything on your laptop? Like any, no. I mean, you, you. No, there's nothing on my laptop right now. So if I look back at my screen, there's no red circle at sign in, which is part of where the problem comes in if you're trying to share it with students on Zoom. Is that if you're sharing it with students who are on Zoom while well, you also have students who are in person, downside or challenge of it is when you're using that glass pane effect, you're not going to be able to show it to the kids on your computer. Um, and uh, part of why I'm really trying to emphasize that and point that out is because that's one of the really easy pitfalls is there is a way that you can do it, and we're going to jump into that, where students who are on the Zoom can also see it, but this is not it. Um, and what we're actually going to go ahead and do is we're going to look at that. So we're going to take a look at our Zoom. And again, you can see that I'm doing it on my computer, but I can also do Sorry, I had to delete it. There we go. When you work on your glass pane, again, since it's a glass pane effect, if I move ahead on my screen, it will not also show up on here. So, just something to watch out for. Okay, now, since I'm on my uh, computer, I can just type it in here. When I go to type a password, it won't just all pop up on the top of the screen. <laughs> so I can still use my laptop even though it's connecting wirelessly, or I can go ahead and I can use the screen itself. So if I want to go ahead and host a meeting, I can go ahead and host it. We'll save the video on. It'll open up with my Zoom, and I'm on your device now, lovely. When you join, uh, when you're using your audio, you can make it, you can have it go through your board, and it should be going through your board. The way that you're going to double check on that is down here where you have your speaker. Right now, the good line being muted is probably a good thing, because otherwise we're going to have lots of echoing happening. But you just need to make sure that when you're looking that it says that line one virtual audio cable. That's going to be how you make sure that it has your audio coming out through um, the board itself, not through your computer. So if you ever run into an issue where it's coming out through your computer, just double check on um, your sound settings on the computer itself. That's probably all it is. So if I'm in my Zoom and I want to make sure that my students can see what I'm writing and see what I'm doing, I can still go through my Zoom and do my share screen. And if I share my viewboard, then when I'm sharing my screen, my students are going to be able to go through and see what I'm doing and see those changes I'm making. Um, if you remember with that my viewboard app, but the Mighty Board app, we have it kind of appearing off the side because I asked it to be appearing in uh, whatever my windows is on. So I can switch it back to being on my whiteboard. I can make any of my changes on here that I wanted to make to the basic map. But I can also go back to that window button. And I can still use my items that are here. And they should see that? Students can see that. OK, so if we're on a presentation that we shared our screen, and those are up, mm -hmm. I can write them. Yes. As long as you're going through, so that's part of why we, we really kind of uh, encourage teachers to use that connection with the computer and use the app that's on the computer okay. because they have that feature where you can toggle back and forth between the computer or your presentation. Okay. Yeah. So my students who are viewing it through my screen share, they'll be able to see that 2 plus 2 that appears. And again, what's nice is that we can do things like we can save our presentations, we can bounce back and forth between our whiteboard and so on. So 
that's kind of giving a, a little bit of an idea of how you can use it, at least with Zoom. Um, I do want to show you how you can make sure you set up your site, and then we're going to take a look at some of the features in the My Viewer app in particular. Um, when it comes to Zoom, yes. the audio, you still have the Zoom audio like coming through your computer? Um, if you do, then again, like, I would... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, does that thing have a microphone on it somewhere? Uh-huh. Like, I'm thinking about how the kids are going to hear me talk. Hear you. So I need to make sure that when I'm on the Zoom settings that the... So that's, that's going to be part... I don't believe that it does. I can double check on that. I mean, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I was say I haven't either, but I, I can still double check just to make sure. Um, but what I would maybe also do is if you are doing that wireless casting, you can have your computer or your device with you as you're using it, like as you're using that computer's microphone. Um, so it can still pick you up pretty easy, even yeah. if you know you're in the back of the room because you have your device that you're using the mic for. So some of it might just be also checking out, you know, what microphone settings you can or can't use and things like that. With it. Yeah. Yeah. The only issue I've had with the casting, and it could be just my room, is that the connection is not really good. Like, it's fine with the visual stuff, like the screen doesn't flicker, but the audio, like if I'm like playing, like if I try and do the morning announcements over there, the audio is just kind of jumping. Okay. okay, so, really good point, and part of what um, I actually want to show you, I'm going to hop on Zoom real quick. Um, so I was going to talk about that because one of my biggest issues with you know teaching and everything was what about those days when the network just isn't working right? If we have the network goes down, if we have it just being super slow, how are we actually going to you know still be able to use this? Um, and that's one of the top things that I look for when I'm using any tech is what do I do on the day it doesn't work? Um, so there is an alternative to what you can do to doing the wireless casting. So in addition to doing the wireless cast. You can also do a cast, or uh, you can also use the board by just plugging in. Um, so, what are kind of the trade offs? Well, when we plug in, we may not be able to take our device with us everywhere, and it might mean that we're going back up to it, but what we gain is that reliability. So, if you ever have days where it's not working quite right with the casting, you can always still plug in. Um, when you go to plug in, you'll actually have a um, HDMI and USB port that you use. The HDMI cord goes in to get the visual and audio on there, and then the USB is actually used for that interactivity. So you could also just as easily plug it into your computer. And when you're plugged in, you'll see the HDMI popped up now, and we can still go through and use that same interactivity that we had before. So if you ever have a day where network's not really quite working right, or you're having a hard time with getting the casting to work, you can always plug it in. So there is an alternative. Would it be better for the boards, and this might be more like other network people, if we plug in the Ethernet, would that help the casting issue? It or might. It might. Okay. It might. I'll have to talk to Chris about that and see. Yeah. I think the plan is to not have them all on Wi-Fi, but initially just getting them on the wall sure. is the main right. focus. Right. <laughs> right. So then that might be part of it too, but part of why that, that Wi-Fi connection is there is because that's what your laptop needs right. in order to be able to connect. So maybe your computer's plugged into the Ethernet, but right. yeah, that would be a, a Chris question and Jason question. And what, what you're using right there is a standalone program called the Whiteboard, My Whiteboard? Correct. So the My, yeah, so the My, yeah. Viewboard, the My Viewboard app, it, this is being run through the computer. There's, like you said, there's the version that's on the board itself. But this is the version that's running in the computer. Um, highly, 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 highly recommend it compared to using the one that's in the apps or the board itself. The board itself is kind of more like a like a light version, um, whereas this has a full functionality that you can use. Yeah. What, I was gonna say I found one that you can get through on the web, mm -hmm. but it has like a third of the functionality. So this is the program you said we're gonna eventually get done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was showing cool. Jason and I were kind of walking through it and everything, and so that's going to get downloaded for you guys so that you can use it. Yeah. All right. So um, I do want to show you guys. So we are actually plugged in now, um, and I did also want to show you where you go to make your viewer account and to get that all set up. 
because with the My Reward account, um, the way to think of it is that going to the site to set up your account is how you kind of get started. And then when you run your day-to-day -day lessons and things like that, that's going to be using that My Reward app. Um, which again, Jason's going to make sure it gets pushed out to everybody um, so you don't even have to sweat that part. So when you're on the My Reward site, um, all you have to do is go to sign in, sign in with Google. And then I was already signed, I already signed in a little bit earlier, but it'll ask you to sign in um, and you just use your Viking mail account. And then you're set and good to go. A couple of things that are on here that are pretty helpful. Um, they do have the web version of the whiteboard. Um, this is actually pretty nice for if you want to work on making any of your presentations outside of just being on board. Um, you can make presentations here. I really recommend using the app on your computer, but if for some reason you can't access it, or if you want to get to kind of poke around and play with it before Jason uh, installs it, um, that's a way that you can go about doing it. We have clips, which we mentioned before, are kind of like their version of YouTube, where you can have um, a number of different videos that are approved for education. Um, and then this is one of my favorites, is the wiki. In addition to the wiki, they have tutorial videos. So if you have anything where you're like, I wonder how I can do this, I wonder how I use um, the image, the, like the image search feature. I wonder how I use this um, timer feature. I wonder how I get measurements to show up when I'm when I'm creating shapes. Um, I highly recommend checking out any of our tutorial videos there as well. Wiki, the reason I love it is that on the wiki itself, if you go to my new board original content, they have a whole series of, of lessons that are available. Um, you can search for some, through some of these lessons by subject, so if you teach math, you can have all the math ones appear, and you can get to look through and see different math lessons that you can do. Maybe you want something that's in time for the holidays. Um, they even have an IWB one if you're looking for an IWB file as well. Um, a lot of these skew, a number of these can skew toward um, middle school, elementary. Um, so if you don't quite find what you're looking for, no worries. It can be used as a template to create your own and to expand on. Or it's honestly kind of nice too just to see what's available and what are some of the options of what we can do. What are some of the things that are cake that we're able to do within using the presentation software. So really cool feature. Kind of nice to get to check it out. But again, all you're really going to need that website for is just for signing in. And just making sure that you have your account so that when it goes to save, it can save directly to your account. Okay. Any questions on our site here? Cool. All right, so last thing that we're going to be kind of talking about is the app itself. So in that My Viewboard app, we're going to do just kind of a, a highlight of some of your tools and features and things like that. Again, my main focus and where I get excited is in how you can really use it in a classroom and how you can use it uh, to your benefit. So you'll notice that we have our main board here. And down along the bottom, we have our toolbar. So again, our window button is what takes us over back to using our desktop and back to seeing what's actually on our desktop screen. If we ever want to go through and we want to go back to it, we just hit that My Right Word button again, and it takes us right back. So with one click, you can be on your computer screen, you can flip back to the app itself, um, and still have the functionality behind it. Um, you have your screenshot tool as well. So with the screenshot tool, you can choose how much you want to get a screenshot of, and it'll pop up, and you can quickly make copies. This is also something that can be really cool too for if you want to save any examples that you find. Um, if you are on a website, this works as well. So if I'm over on this site, and I want to capture something, I just click that screenshot icon, I can choose if I want to capture the whole screen, a section of the screen, um, or if I even want to do a video. And again, I can just drag, and it pops up directly in my board. So it's an easy way to get things over into your board that then you can manipulate and interact with. You have your move icon as well that can help you move things around the screen. So if I don't like it being covering up my 2 plus 2, I can move it off to the side. There's whole bunch of options that are available when you do have images selected. You can make them into links. You can cut and copy and paste. You can get rid of background colors. 
Um, you can do things like flip it horizontally, vertically, every which way. You can even actually save it to the cloud as well, so you can save it to your Google Drive just using the image itself. Really nice for if you're saving like student work, for example. So if you have students who work on the board and you want to save what they've done, you can do that. Next to it is this manila folder. Really helpful if you are looking to create a new presentation, open an existing one, or save it, that's all right here. So with our first button, that's when we create a new presentation. The one that looks like we have a manila folder coming out. Um, that's going to go ahead and be your Open button. So you can actually open your files there as well. So if you have, let's say you've created a lesson there, you can go through and you can open anything that's on your laptop. You can open anything that's in your Google Drive if your drive is connected. You can also open, there's a button in the middle that has that My View Board. You can open any additional content and pull their lesson in right there. So again, another great resource and another great way that maybe can help you out as you're uh, working through it. So you can open it. We have our Save button next to it. And then our Save that has a pencil is Save As. And then next to that, we have what looks like a, a rectangle with an arrow coming out of it. That's actually to export it. So when you go to export it, if I go to save this, let's say save it in my drive, you can save it as a different file type. So you could actually save it as a PNG, you could save it as a PDF, or you can save it as a PowerPoint. This is also where you can save it as an interactive whiteboard file. Typically, it saves as a whiteboard file. Um, that's going to be what gets you the full interactivity of using the My Whiteboard app. Um, so I would usually recommend that you save it as a .vboard. If you're used to using IWB, I would recommend using uh, the vboard one if you can. Last, you can print, and then this is where I geeked out as a middle school teacher. You also have QR codes as well that you can actually add to your board. So let's say it's the end of the bell, students are on their way rushing out of the room, and you're like, oh wait, we'll just make sure you give like a picture of what the homework is for tonight, or oh wait, make sure that you double check what our notes are. I can click that QR button, and the kids can scan the QR code. They can also just go to that website, that link at the bottom, and they have access to all the notes, all the information, everything that we did on that board in class. So if they have a study hall or any study time in between when we had class and I go to put up the information, they still have access to the notes and to everything we did that day. I lost it when I saw that. I got really excited. So what format is that? When they go to that link, is that just like a PDF? Yeah, so it would be more, it would be more like a PDF, so it's, okay. not, um, it's not something that they could like still interact with gotcha. and manipulate. Yeah. So instead, is, of, instead of exporting that as a PDF, we can just post that link like classroom and they can just click. Okay. You do have to, yeah, you do still have to enable that QR code to be a thing. Because um, yeah. so if you notice, I had a setting that popped up that said, do you want to add a QR code right. for this presentation? Right. And that works just fine. Okay. So that's all within our nice little folder. Um, the next piece looks like a cardboard box with like bubbles coming out of it. This is actually where you can import resources. So you can import YouTube videos, any Google Docs, any Google Slides, any information you have there. So I can actually click my Drive button again, and I can go through my Drive, and let's say I want to put in this test image that I had earlier today. So I can click it, and you'll notice it's popped up off to the side. So I can add in images, you can add in Google Docs, you can add in Google Slides. You can actually create your Google Slide presentation and have them appear as multiple slides. So you can make every single slide something that you can interact with, which is really exciting. Um, you can also do things like insert post-it notes. You can actually connect to a document camera from here as well. Um, again, we have the uh, clips from the uh, from the viewboard itself. Um, you have YouTube you can connect to, images, you can download something from the cloud. There's a whole variety of features. Strongly recommend that you take some time to kind of play around with each of them and get a feel for what they do. But all of that is 
can be accessed just from that little box that has the bubbles coming out of it. And if you're finding that when you go to open that, maybe you're not seeing more particular account with it or anything like that, double check that you are signed in with your viewport account because that's part of what's going to connect in with Google Drive. So if you ever find that it's not popping up correctly, double check there with your account to make sure that you are signed in. Um, last couple ones that we have here. Um, we have a hand here that when that's selected, you can actually use it to create an infinite canvas. So I know I had plenty of days of whiteboards where I would do all this great work and we do awesome stuff, and then we had to erase it because there's no more room. So this is a way that you can go through and you can zoom in, you can zoom out. I can actually move around. So if I'm like, I want to put bell one's work up there, bell two is going to be over here, bell three, bell four. Then when I go to give that presentation and I go to share that with students, they'll be able to see the bell one, bell two, bell three, bell four all together. Um, so it's a way to kind of get to play around with that canvas as well. Our next one up is a lasso. So if I want to take this whole written portion of the hello, I just circle around it, and now it's one image that I can move around as I need to. So if I want that one out of the way, I can do that, even though they were all written separately. That's also where, let's say that, I want to make it hello. Okay, so and hello. I can move things around as I need to. Any of my written work, any writing that students have done, you could do that with as well. Maybe a student's written something in one column um, of a KWL that you can maybe go, mm, I think that fits more with this one or fits more in this other area. You can move that over and swipe that over pretty easily. Move that back up for a message. And then the next ones are really just not what we've been seeing with that pen, eraser, shapes, and text right there as well. So we have our pen that we can use, changing color, you can change the size of it, you can change the type of pen that you're using. Our little bird icon is actually a shape one, so you can actually put different shapes in there as well. Um, we have our eraser, so if we decide we don't like the birds that we just created, we just drag the eraser over it and they're gone. Our shapes. And what's nice too with the shapes is that while the original three options are you know, square, circle, triangle, especially for any math teachers, this is pretty nice, that it goes all the way up to 12-sided uh, figures. You can fill them in. You can also create 3D images as well. So if I wanted to create a cube, I can create a cube just with the swipe. You also can go and you can create different tables. So if I wanted to create a table, and this is nice for BLA, if I wanted to make a, a chart with agree, disagree, or uh, it says, I say, or anything like that, I just click on how many rows, how many columns, and it pops up for me. And then from there, I can make it larger, I can make it smaller, I can move it around as I need to, and make it something that fits. So really nice to give that a chance. And then the last one that's there is our T that's next to it, and the T is just text. So if you just want to write in text or if you want to type it in, again, you can also still connect with your computer and just type it out, especially if it's something longer. Um, that's how I did the welcome sign-in and everything, was we just typed it out. But you can change any of your font. You can make it centered, left, right, all the typical text editing tools are available for you. And then finally, we have our undo and redo. So let's say that you maybe accidentally erased something you didn't mean to, you can just click undo and fix that. And then our last one here is this number. Um, our number here says, for instance, two, because we are on slide two of two. But this is where you can add in other slides pretty easily. You can make copies. Um, and you can also delete any that you don't want. So if I decide I don't really need this top one anymore, I can delete it. And now it's gone. Maybe I'm in the middle of class and I'm getting ready for the next one and I just quickly need that clean slate and I don't want my students to even have a chance to see what the other classes have said, I want their ideas. I can hit that plus button and now it's there. It's kind of just like creating a new slide in Google Slides, but you have infinite space that you can work with. So a lot of really great tools that are listed there. And again, those are tools too that we can use pretty easily with um, any of our sites as well. And using things like that screenshot, using the lasso, any of the pen um, opportunities, we can pull that into our presentation and make it a whole complete presentation 
that hopefully can save some time too when you're trying to put your lessons online for any remote students as well. And then over to the side, you'll see we have one tiny little uh, toolbar here. We, our theory is that they made the toolbar its own separate thing because what we can do is go into presentation mode. And when you go into presentation mode, everything else kind of disappears, all the uh, extra bits that are around it. So it makes it just a little nice and sleeker. And then I can actually advance back and forth between my slides. So you can advance between your slides. Something that's kind of neat too is there is um, a companion app um, for, uh, I think Android, I want to say iPhone, um, where you can download it. And even if I'm plugged in, I can still be walking around the room and if I'm connected to it, I can advance my slides. I can go back in my slides. They even have a little button where you can make it a laser pointer and everything. So for someone who used to be like, confined to their computer when they needed to advance between notes on grammar. Super nice to be able to just kind of do that while switching these to work. And then, last but not least, down in the left corner, it's super hidden, or at least it tries to be hidden, but it looks like a little, uh, the little image of the map and everything. If I click that, I can change the background of any of these. So I can change the background, let's say, if it's a music class, I can change it so that the background is music is music staff. So if you wanted to be able to have students write music on there and everything, or write music notes, or do any annotations, they could do so. If you were going through, you could have maybe different uh, backgrounds for different sayings or important points. You could do things like have a world map if you needed people to do any annotations for any geography. There's also a lot of really neat um, graphic organizers on there too. So if you're looking at like the table I was making and going, mm -mm, that's too much work, they have a ton of different graphic organizers and backgrounds and backdrops that you can use for students. In addition, you can also um, import any of your background images uh, as well, so you can have that chance uh, to have other images for your background. So it helps make it kind of nice for being able to go through and again customize. And you can always choose to apply it to every page or just this one. Um, it makes it pretty, pretty handy. So, do, do, do. I'm going to double check and make sure that we get all of our pieces. I don't believe so. Yeah. So, those are just about all of our different pieces that we can do with the MyView Board um, app and the MyView Board or the View Board itself. Really those key things, again, to hit on. Um, for creating your MyViewBoard account, that's going to be on the MyViewBoard.com website. So you do need to have that before you can connect any of your drive or any of your information there. If you want to connect with Zoom, super easy to do. It's just opening up the Zoom, screen share, um, and when you share your screen, as you go through and make your changes, again, using the MyViewBoard app, students will still be able to see it. Remember, if you're having any trouble with students not seeing it, Double check if you're not using that glass pane feature, um, that you're using the app itself. And for really any of that, the bulk of the work in terms of making the lessons or anything like that, that might be more app um, that Jason's going to push out is super, super useful. It's really the most robust version of it and really helpful to get to use. Um, so strongly recommend that that's kind of the avenue that you use for making your lessons. And since it's just on your computer, you can do that from anywhere and then just plug and play. Uh, for when you get into your classroom. Awesome. So I think that's just about it. If you guys have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. And if you want a chance to kind of poke around and play around with the screen or anything while I'm here, I'm happy to help out too. Awesome. Thank you guys.